The Six to Seven Figure Show, Episode 14. Ready? Let's hit it. Broadcasting from the Valley of the Sun, outside Phoenix, Arizona, this is the Six to Seven Figure Show. Tired of working so hard and having no time? Take your six-figure practice and turn it to a thriving seven-figure enterprise. And now, your host, author, speaker, mentor, and strategist, Frank Bria. Everyone, welcome to the Six to Seven Figure Show. I'm Frank Bria, and today I'm joined by Dove Gordon, good friend of mine and uh, a, a, a consultant who helps other consultants and experts get ideal clients consistently. And uh, look, there's millions and millions of coaches and consultants out there who are really good at what they do, but they're just not the, uh, I guess you would call it charismatic guru types, and they never really want to be. Um, but they love their work and um, all they want is a consistent flow of great clients, clients who value their expertise and who value who they are as people and will pay them well for it. So Dove and his small team take a tactic agnostic approach, which I find really fascinating. We're going to talk about that. Uh, and they help you build a strong strategic foundation to apply it to build a simple client getting system that's best for you. Um, Dove's been a guest on the Art of Charm, John Jansen's Duct Tape Marketing Podcast, Jeff Goins Podcast, dozens of others. A good friend of mine, um, head of a uh, mastermind of some of the brightest digital marketers in the space. And you can learn a lot more about Dove's work at uh, his website, dovegordon.net. Uh, Dove, thanks for being here. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Um, so let's, let's uh, dig into this a little bit. How, how did you get into working with this particular audience with this particular problem? Um, fell into it, you know. Um, you are, you know, often, I'm definitely one of those people who you're, I am my market, I was my market. Yeah. Um, and, you know, because like, I'm, I'm not the charismatic guru type. I'm the kind of person who I'm really good. I've got some very valuable skills. It took me a while to, to hone them. Uh, you know, before going back to the early 2000s, I, I knew I had a lot to offer. I just didn't understand how to sell it. I didn't know how to really get clients. It was uh, for the first seven, seven years, maybe a little longer, it was a total uphill battle, constant struggle. And um, at some point when I turned the corner, I looked back and I realized that there are a lot of people uh, who are on, on a very, uh, struggling in a very similar way. They love what they do. They're really, they're, they're really good. They've got valuable skills, um, but they're not interested in being like the online celebrity type. They're not interested in being the guru. All they want is we're doing great work with great people, making a great income. And, you know, through the struggle, just through, uh, you know, I, I seem to have a, a penchant for uh, suffering through certain things and then <laughs> distilling the lessons down to where they're very simple and clear so other people can uh, save some of the pain. Uh, we all have to live our lives and, and I don't think any of us will ever, you know, there's nobody who can save us from all of life's pain. But if you find the right person, that person could certainly lead you through some minefields or help, help accelerate your progress. And uh, we've been fortunate to be that person for, for many other consultants, coaches, experts, small professional sir, uh, firm owners, and so on. Yeah, that, uh, that, you know, it's interesting, that dynamic that you referred to, that there is a, a very loud voice in the marketplace that you need to become this very outspoken, charismatic, always on Instagram, you know, taking pictures of you sitting out by the pool all the time in order to make this work. And there aren't a lot of, of people sort of countering that voice in the marketplace. Uh, do, do you think there's a lot more people with your opinion uh, or are you kind of standing alone uh, shouting this particular message from your corner? I, I don't, I, I mean, I'm sure there are some people saying a similar message. I, 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 I can't think of anybody right now, but there are definitely, you know, the other type, the charismatic guru type is, is much more uh, visible. You know, right. we all come across them all the time. Sure. Um, but I have, I could pull up a quote from a, a, a client of ours. I just, I was working on something and I, I, um, oh, yeah, this is, this, this I think is how many people do 
do you think? You know, what she shared with me before she started working with me was that, you know, a lot of the advice out there that she gets, it seems to be geared towards spending every waking moment building social media content. And she's a consultant. We deal with a lot of corporate, uh, corporate refugees as how I think about it. Right. So she spent many years in the corporate world doing all different types of work. Um, business to consumer, business to business, manufacturing operations, uh, smart, capable, talented person, like most of the people that we work with. Like they've yeah. got a lot to offer to a lot of different people. And then she decided to, to quit and do her own thing, leave the corporate bureaucracy behind her. But, you know, it, it's a different skill set. You discover that, you know, a year, year and a half later, there's a reason why um, many of these people have yet to meet and exceed their corporate salary and that's yeah. what we help them do meet and exceed their past corporate salary so she's you know when we first had it got into a little conversation um on linkedin actually um so she said a lot of it seems uh, oh, a lot of the advice out there she was getting seems to be geared towards spending every waking moment building social media content and honestly even though that might work i'd rather my st- uh, i would rather stab myself in the face 30 times a day smiley face <laughs> everybody wants to be a star and i just honestly find it a bit nauseating and inauthentic I just really like doing the work that I do and I love getting to know people and working with them and I'm actually relatively charming and funny. But creating scintillating content on process improvement and business analysis and effective teams, despise it. So that's, uh, that's what she wrote to me and that led to our conversation and she joined our UA force to be reckoned with the program and was very happy with it. Great to work with. So, but, but the point is, I think that probably 80 to 90% of the consultants, coaches, experts and, and, and small firms out there belong on the path of mastery rather than on the path of the charismatic guru. Right. I think that that's, that's how I think about it. They're, they're, we find ourselves on that wrong path largely because that's what's most visible. Right. I, w- I will also say that there, there are a lot of people, I hope I don't offend anybody, but I probably will. I think there are a lot of people who, who they don't realize it, but on some level they're drawn to the charismatic guru types because they like to rub elbows with cool people. They say they want to build their business, but a big part of their motivation, and I, I, this is my observation, uh, and, I, and I think that a lot of them may not be so aware of it. Of course, it could be I'm, I'm putting thoughts in people's heads, but uh, so I'm always open to the possibility. But I do think that a lot of them, it's very much about um, being part of the cool kids club more so than anything else. The, the problem is that the charismatic guru uh, type people and, and I have nothing wrong with that. The path, both yeah. paths could work. The question right. is, who are you? What's your personality? Right. Which path do you belong on? Right. And, and I think that there are some people who will end up on there just because that's what they see, right? There are some people who end up on there because they're drawn by some other, you know, hidden motivation they're not in touch with, like I was talking about. And, and then there are some people on there who um, just like, like this woman, like they start and, or, and they, they don't even really want to go down that path at all. So they don't know what to do. There's another path. That's what I think was the path of mastery. And I think that's uh, something that the 80, maybe 90% of, of people really belong on. Right. Well, it, look, it, I think it's a truth that um, people are, are drawn to the charismatic folks and therefore believe that's the only way to make things work. Because, you know, in, in marketing, oftentimes the loudest voice, it may not win, but it certainly you know, gets ahead of the race for a while. I mean, look, look, that's even true for me. I mean, I've been, you know, started off on the corporate space and been at this for, you know, more than 20 years. I don't even want to say how long I've been at this. And when I started in the digital marketing space about seven years ago, I got pulled into tactics and ideas and stuff that, you know, as a corporate consultant, I would never have tried. I would never do it because it just seemed to work for people. And, when you get behind the scenes and you start to see what's going on, you realize that it's kind of empty. The, the, what, one of the benefits, I think, of having been now behind the scenes in dozens and dozens of very large uh, coaching organizations uh, and consulting organizations is that a lot of times that loud noise that they're, they're trying to, to sell you on isn't actually the engine behind the machine. You know, it, it might be the, the cool facade that gets you in, but there's actually something else going on uh, behind the scenes. And uh, what do you have in mind? Yeah. Yeah. What I mean, like it, what? well, what's that? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm imagining what you might be, well, be referring uh, you know, to, but I, I don't know if it's true. So like, what, well, what do you mean? Going back to your point um, that uh, when you said, you know, a lot of people get drawn to this because they, they want to be in the cool kids club. I'll tell you on the flip side, I, I can see the, the other side of it too, which is 
There's a lot of charismatic folks, guru types um, that sell products that are simply about hanging out with the cool kids. So, you know, when you actually dig into what is this product about? What's the outcome? What's the process? What are you trying to create? It's very empty. There's not a lot there. And it is uh, dr driven primarily around sort of fandom, you know, and we yeah. just want to hang out with the right folks. And, and, you know, some people figure it out and they realize, oh, you know, that they really do want to serve an audience and they've just never been taught how. But uh, I do see this dynamic. So to observe it from both ends of the spectrum, I think, um, you know, cause some credence to, to the theory. Yeah. For sure. There's no easy way. You know, the, the fact is that uh, succeeding in business and in, in life in general is hard. Yeah. And the sooner we accept that as a fact, to paraphrase uh, M. Scott Peck, you know, uh, what is it here? He said, where is it? I have it here somewhere, I think, unless it's home. You know? Yeah, I think it's home. Right. So, uh, you know, um, but I do have the quote, right? He said that. Um, life is difficult. This is the opening of his book. Um, yeah, the book, um, the path of the path, less traveled, the road, less traveled. Well, life right. is difficult. This is a great truth. One of the greatest truths. It is a great truth because once we truly see this truth, we transcend it. Once we truly know that life is difficult, once we truly understand and accept it, then life is no longer difficult because once it is accepted, the fact that life is difficult no longer matters. Yeah. And there are so many of us, who we seem to be wired with a desire to believe that it's easy, that there's somebody out there, these people out there, it's easy. They, they're promising it's right. easy. Right. They seem to have it all figured out. It seems easy for them. Right. I mean, look at all the, 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 the pictures and videos they're putting up. Right. Uh, and everybody seems to want them and throw money at them. Right. Um, the fact is that th there are aspects that might be easier for them but there are other things that they're finding difficult that you might find easy, right? And vice versa. So the thing is that anytime we're expecting it's going to be easy, it's an illusion. And the sooner that we uh, disabuse ourselves of that illusion, the sooner we're actually ready to put in the hard work necessary. Right. And as M. Scott Peck was saying, well, once you're ready, once you're expecting hard work, uh, it becomes easier. Right. It's almost because, a beautiful secular Buddhist sort of <laughs> philosophy there. What is yeah. It? Uh, Life is pain kind of. <laughs> well, you know, and the, but the, then you know, it gets easier when you realize that. And that, that reminds me of the, uh, the famous Jim Rohn quote, right? Which I also, I'm working on something. So I happen to have this on uh, some slides in front of me. It's not like I, I was preparing. Getting all, all these this, quotes all set up. This is what I was working on right, right before our, our interview. You, you know, Jim Rohn says, you got to learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your business. Yeah. Right? If you work harder, if you work hard on your business, you'll make a living. If you work hard on yourself, you can make a fortune. And the, the reason why, I, why is it so hard to succeed, to, to really thrive as a successful uh, consultant, coach, expert, and so on. Like, wh why is it hard? I think it's hard because your, your um, leadership, right? Consulting is leadership. Coaching is leadership. Yeah. Sales is leadership. Right. And, and essentially, we're asking people to allow us to lead them from where they are to where they want to be in an important key aspect of life. And you can't just expect people to follow you because you think you're good, right. even if you really are good. You have to earn the right to lead. And it's not enough to even master your craft. You also have to earn the right to lead uh, by mastering the marketing and the sales of your craft. And that's something that a lot of people are, are not so comfortable with, especially when all they've been led down is the path of the charismatic guru. Right. So you have to earn the right to lead. You do that by mastering your craft as well as by mastering marketing and sales. But you don't have to like most people, like we really distill it down to the, you know, the critical 10% that gives you 90% of what you want, as I see it, right? You do not have to do almost everything that everybody says you have to do, right? But you do have to do something. You have to grow as a person. You have to be willing to be the kind of person that your ideal clients want to follow. And that's not about doing things. It's not about posting Instagram videos. Right. You know, it's not about just being visible on social media. It's, it's not about any of that. It's yeah. about becoming that one who naturally causes those results, who bec you know, becoming that one that, that, that is, is a, almost like the natural leader. And I don't mean you have to be a natural leader, but I mean is that you become the one that the people you want to serve want to follow. Was that, right. that make sense? 
Totally. And I, and I love that. Um, I love that perspective because it's completely aligned in parallel with this, with what I see, you know, when, when I do work, when our team does work with folks who are um, redesigning a, a program or, or creating a high ticket program, um, I describe it as a personal transformation experience. I mean, because there's no way that you get from where you are to where you want to be five X, 10 X without transforming as a person. And the yep. whole idea of going out and leading a, a, a group of clients in transformation means that transformation has to happen with you first. So I, I, I totally love that. I want to, I want to take that idea, pivot off of it a little bit to talk about your, your program in particular. Uh, you mentioned the name earlier, but I wanted you to um, uh, tell us what it is again. What's it called? You a force to be reckoned with. Mm-hmm. And uh, I can explain that. I yeah, mean, it's, it's, not, what, it's what, not one of these that, that uh, have an, you, you instantly understand it from the name. Um, yeah, give us a bit of a, a summary. What, what, do you, what do you do in that? It's program? really simple. I, I think of it as, like the, as the basic boot camp that every consultant, every coach, uh, every, every professional service firm owner really should have gone through. Um, because before you're worrying about Facebook ads and Instagram and LinkedIn and all that, before you worry or whatever, or public speaking and yeah. so on, um, almost, almost nobody gets the foundational pieces right. And you mentioned earlier that we're tactic agnostic. That means that we believe that every tactic could work and every tactic could fail. So the, the question of, well, what should I do to get clients is the wrong question. Okay. The question uh, you know, it's because the answer will be, well, you got to do this. You got to do that. Facebook, LinkedIn, podcasting, uh, webinars, uh, evergreen webinar funnels to this and that and so on. Yeah. And um, what I noticed after spinning my head and watching a lot of this uh, over the years, it's many years ago, I realized like, wait, every single one of these could work and every single one of these could fail. Right. So a better question instead of what should I do to get clients? Uh, a better question is, well, if everything works and everything could fail, then when it works, why does it work? And when it fails, why does it fail? And I need to understand that. And, you know, I mean, I could just give you the real bottom line on that. But the bottom line is that when what you're doing works, you're created a simple, repeatable system, a simple plan to market and sell your expertise that answers the only three questions that your ideal clients ever have. All right. I'll tell you what that is. But, but the way I see it, in order for your ideal client to go from total stranger to happily paying you a nice amount of money for your expertise, for your help, they only have to answer three questions, right? And what are those questions? Number one, is what you're talking about, um, should I pay attention? Is it interesting? Yeah. Right? And they, it doesn't matter how they find you. It doesn't matter if they find you through a, a cold email you send them. It doesn't matter if it's a, a LinkedIn post or a Facebook group. or Again, it doesn't matter. They come across you somehow. Right. And their brain goes, should I pay attention? Is it interesting? And the first job of your marketing funnel, if you like, your marketing system is, (laughs) excuse me, to lead them to answer, yes, it is interesting. And if if they answer yes, then instantly they have a second question. If they answer no, by the way, (laughs) no, not interesting, they leave. Right. Right? Lose them. Right. Um, Second question is, okay, you got me interested, but can I trust you? Mm. You know, who are you? Are you for real? Are you, yeah. Do you actually know your stuff and do you, you know, and do you care or are you just trying to sell me something? Right. So the second job of your marketing and selling system or funnel is to lead your ideal client to answer yes a second time. Yes, I can trust you. You seem to know your stuff. You're talking about my issues in a way that I haven't heard anyone else talk about it before. And you actually seem to care. If so, that leads to the third question, which is, okay, you got me interested. I, I see I can trust you. Last question, is what you recommend right for me? Right. Is what you recommend right for me? And the last job, that's the sales portion of this, is to lead them to conclude, yes. And that doesn't matter if you're selling one-to-many on a sales page or a, we- a webinar uh, or one-to-one. It's always the same questions. And it doesn't matter if you're selling through a, um, through a, a vending machine uh, and you're sending Cokes. We go through the same questions, right. just a lot faster. Sure. If you're selling military equipment, You know, and there are lots of buyers. It just takes longer. It takes longer. That's right. And and I want to point out one more thought, then I'll be quiet um, until you ask, you know, tell me where you want to go with this. But, (laughs) but the, you know, here, here's the thing is that uh, if uh, most people don't understand what they're trying to do when they build a marketing funnel, Uh, 
you ask most people, well, what's the purpose of a marketing funnel? Because every, every, a funnel is a system. It's a right. process. Yeah. Every system or process needs a purpose. What's the outcome? So most people will tell you, well, uh, you, know, you need a marketing funnel. Why? Well, to fill your pipeline, to get leads, to close deals. And then we nod our heads as if we understand. Right. <laughs> because, because it makes sense um, until we stop and think about it. And then we say, okay, yeah, okay, that makes sense. I got to fill my pipeline. I got to get leads and close deals. Okay, um, how do I do that? Well, you need to run Facebook ads to your evergreen uh, webinar funnel and that, 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 that. Not that, right. again, any of these could work and these could right. fail. And you need to rebrand, you need to publish a book and you need to do a podcast right. and you need to be speaking and, uh, and you're like, what the hell? I mean, <laughs> I can't keep up with even one or two of these. And, but why does a person feel compelled to do that? because they don't understand the real purpose right. of their marketing funnel, right. which is you just need one thing in place for each question. You put yep. one thing in place to help them answer yes to each question and you'll have a consistent flow of ideal clients. Yeah. It goes back to the, the actual purpose of the exercise. And if, I mean, you know, th this goes back to, you know, I taught math a long time ago and the same thing, basically the exact same situation, right? It's like if someone's trying to solve an algebra problem, either they know what they're doing or they're just following steps. And a lot of people were like, just tell me the steps and I'll get through the problem. Um, but those people who truly understood what they were doing, manipulating the stuff, were way better at it. And, you know, it, and I get that some people don't want to put the effort in to try to understand the psychology of marketing. But I think those people, like you pointed out, tend to then get dragged down into a magical set of tactics uh, that they think is going to solve everything, which, you know, again, if you don't apply it in the right scenario, it won't work anyway. So, yeah, I mean, the, the, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a simply, it's a lie to just say that, you know, marketing getting clients is easy. Right. It's also true that it's not hard, right? Again, it's difficult, but when you accept that it's difficult, it becomes easier. Like we yeah. talked about, right. It's a paradox and it's, it's a lot not, of truth yeah. because it's most of the, a... most of the difficulty we, we self manufacture. Yeah. Because if you expect it to be easy and it doesn't work, then you start to think, oh my gosh, you know, am I doing the right thing? Am I doing it right? Why does it seem to work for everybody else and not for me? It must be that I don't know enough and we run off and get another book, another course. Yeah. Yeah. But that's not what we need. You need right. someone to look at what you're doing and say, hit the wall again. Don't just bounce off and like a rumba back and clean and run another direction. Right. right. Hit the wall, take a chip out of it. Hit the wall, take a chip out of it. Hit the wall, take a chip out of it. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and like when you get stuck, they look at what you're doing. No, you do, make this adjustment, fix it hit the wall, take a chip out of it. And then one day the wall crumbles. And finally, like, finally you get it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So there's, um, uh, that m the point of that analogy is that it's not enough to have knowledge to know about all these tactics and so on. You've got to have deep understanding and you're only going to get deep understanding through experiences. And you asked me about UA force to be reckoned with. It's, it's four weeks where we focus on only the critical 10% that makes you look brilliant 90% of the time. Only the critical 10% that gives you 90% of what you want. Nice. It's not about more training, more information. It's about taking you by the hand. We have incredible one-on-one -on -one attention within a small group. Um, nobody else does this. Maybe you do. I don't know. But, uh, but no one else does this. Because right? I, I run a small boutique firm. I'm not tempted. I don't have the desire to build multi-seven figures and scale and, and build a coaching factory, which... Um, Nothing wrong with that if someone's you know living up to, to what they say, but uh, right. uh, as you've seen, well, you when you use the way. phrase "coaching factory," it already sort of is <laughs> well, because not the right way to do things. Look, th there's a lot in the industry, as you well know, and many listening to this might know as well. There's a lot in the industry that's very focused on how can we make it easier for the supplier, you know, for the coach. How can right. we leverage and scale and so on? But the fact is, if we work backwards, right, you know. If you're trying to teach somebody a, a, a sophisticated set of skills, uh, the best thing is one-on-one -on -one or one-on-one or -on -one attention in a small group. Like if, if I want to learn tennis, I could read a book. It's not going to teach me tennis or golf. But the best thing is to have somebody looking at my swing and giving me feedback. And that's what we do. So because otherwise, you know, you can have, um, you know, you, you could sell a big course, a big program, call it coaching, and then say, if you have questions, oh, get on this more information webinar. And then if you have questions, type them in the box. Yeah. Uh, or, you know, ask us, you know, or, or get on these call hours or whatever. But if it's, people need someone to be on top of them, yep. not because they need babysitting, but because they're learning a new nuanced set of skills. Right. 
that they're not used to. They're not used yeah. to the ways of thinking. Yeah, what you're, what you're describing is mentorship and accountability. And, you know, it's a big, that's a big thing for me. We teach it all the time. You, you've got to have three things. You've got to have skills, accountability, and mentorship. If you don't have all three, um, you're never going to create transformation or get results for people. Um, there's lots of different ways to do accountability and mentorship, but most people just don't do it at all. So, you know, to, to, a lot of people think that scale equals group coaching, and that's just not true. Group coaching right. in and of itself only provides part of the formula, but it doesn't provide all of the formula. Um, right. and, and so, yeah, you, you need more. You need more than that. You can't just throw everyone and say, hey, a hundred of my, me and my closest friends are going to get on a call. And maybe if you're lucky this time, we'll get to your question. It doesn't, doesn't work. No, absolutely so, not. So, no. so you, okay. So you're structured in a small group environment. Um, you got a lot of intimate attention. Um, it's four weeks. And what, what's kind of the, the outcome? Like when they're done, what your clients, what, what do they express that they have that they didn't have before? So most, most, uh, most people that come to us, what's missing? Um, what's missing is that in some cases, they're very talented. They have skills that can be applied in many different situations. And they're just not so clear. Like everybody knows you need to pick a niche, but it's not so easy for many people. So yeah. some people, they're at the stage where they need to figure out who am I going to, who am I even selling this to? I've mm -hmm. had a client like this, a client like that, a client like that. How, who am I going after? And then how do I find them? Right. And it's one thing when I'm working with my old network that I built up in the corporate world, where if I say something, they already know me, they trust me to some degree, or they know me, you know, or they heard of me. So they'll sure. listen and they get it. But how do I reach out to people who don't know, who haven't heard of me? They're not, you know, w without becoming a content marketing machine, which most people are not really interested your, your in Your clients don't want to go in that direction, right? Yeah, for the most part, our clients are talented, you know, even world-class at what they do. Highly skilled, even world-class at some kind of valuable skill. Uh, and they're looking, they're, they're, they just want to do great work with great clients, make a great income, like we said before. And they're not interested in, in you know, like doing all those things. They just want to do, I want the shortest path to the client. Right. And what you need is you need to be clear about who that client is. And the way most people figure that out or, or try to figure that out leaves them more confused than not. We've had people, I can have one in, one of mine. I had a, uh, someone who came to work with me after spending $10,000 with a consultant who spent two days with him on an avatar exercise. You know, uh, the yeah. typical avatar exercise just takes you down a rabbit hole. Right. I don't need to know that my ideal client is between 35 and 55 has a wife and two kids or a husband and whatever and yeah. and a dog and a cat and, right. and likes this and reads those blogs you don't need to know most of that look there everything in its right time like everything has a time and a place i'm not i, I that's another thing is like i'd probably make a lot more money if i was very absolute about things uh, oh this is the way to do it but i i really believe in understanding how to think i, I believe that that people need to learn not you know, not the answer to the question of what should I do. People need to learn the answer of how should I think or like what, what that, that's, that sounds, that doesn't sound the way I meant to say it because that sounds like I'm telling people how to think. No, I want to teach people how to think. Well, it's complex means, decision making, right? It's, it's exactly. Decision making. You need to learn how to think at yeah. a higher level. Right. If you want to have a breakthrough, you want to get a better result. You need to change, evolve how you think, how you feel, your emotional mastery and how you work what you actually do on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's what we do. It's a, it's a real working on yourself. You know, like the Jim Rose said, work harder on yourself. It's not about like, oh, I, you know, I got to, like, you know, beat myself. And no, it, it, it's, it's really, it's about getting crystal clear about what are the few things that if I work on in terms of mental toughness, mindset, how to think, like think big, like open up my, my mind to what's possible yeah. and how to get there. Uh, and learn and master some real skills and build my emotional resilience. My, you know, uh, a, big, a big thing for, for many, including myself, uh, I had to work on this. I'm still working on it, uh, you know, all the time, really. But I have a tendency, I think most of us do, to want to avoid pain. Sure. You know, and, and, and if we think about, oh, we start worrying about the future, yeah. right? Oh, I, I'm worried this is going to happen and that would really be painful. Right. I might run out of money. A lot of people tell me like, oh, you know, a lot of our clients, their concern is I'm afraid I'm going to run out of money before I can really make this business work. Right. 
we help them with that. Anyway, I don't remember exactly what you asked me, but hopefully this was helpful. <laughs> no, it's, yeah, no, it, it, it was good. We we're going down the road of trying to figure out exactly what the support infrastructure and mechanisms are. So this, the, you, what you're focusing on very transformational elements and it sounds like your clients end up at the end with a very clear picture about oh, yeah. uh, what they're going to do and how they're going to go about doing yeah, it I remember without we now. worrying about digging into um, these overly complex or maybe advanced right. sort of marketing tactician kinds of things. Um, you know, it, what, what I love about that perspective, by the way, is that so much stuff out there, and I've, I've actually heard other marketers say this, you know, that gets taught about marketing you look at it and you say, and it looks exciting, it looks amazing, it looks like an amazing tactic, but it would never work on anyone who didn't have like an email list of 100,000 people or more. Like it is so ticky tacky dialing in the knobs. I, 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 I talk about it as working on the optimization level mm -hmm. um, that it, it's completely useless. You know, I mean, I, uh, for most people anyway, uh, you know, I spent a number of years at Capital One looking at the marketing of a credit card company who sends out millions and millions of advertisements every week. And, you know, they test 168 different variables uh, before they send something out mass market. And, and a lot of what I see in the marketing tactician space feels like 168 variable optimization, which is like the wrong thing. Most people like 99.9% .9 of business owners right. shouldn't be worrying about that kind of stuff at all. Like, like when's the best time to send an email? When's the best time to hold a webinar? For 98% of the people, the answer is, well, send the email now and schedule the webinar as soon as you can get it ready. Right. You know? It's exactly. like, just, right. and then just do it again, you right. know? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, well look, um, I had, uh, uh, we're coming up uh, on a time. I know you've got some other things to do. I appreciate you uh, taking the time. But uh, where can the listeners find out a little bit more about you um, get to know kind of more of the perspective that we've talked about. So I, I, I want to share something that I think is, uh, I know is very valuable. Um, uh, for five years, I sold what I call my manual. It's called how to systematically and consistently attract first rate clients. We sold that for $97 for five years. There's zero fluff. I did not write this to give it away. Um, it's about 90 pages, zero fluff. Uh, and I'd like to give that away. Right, oh. so it's uh, people can get a free copy at at dovegordon.net forward slash Frank Bria. Okay. All right, that's d o v g o r d o n dot n e t dot net forward slash Frank Bria b r i a. That's in your honor, Frank. In case I you appreciate were that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. and and the links right here below, so uh, people can just click on that as well. But if they listen to the audio um, off offline, uh, then they can, uh, just r right. remember that link and you've made it very easy to do. I've actually read that manual. So I can tell you per firsthand, there is no mm. fluff in that it is good stuff. Very good stuff. And uh, uh, let me, uh, I just remembered where I was going before. Cause you had asked me like, what do we accomplish? Do we have one more minute. Oh yeah, absolutely. So, so it's, it's really, like I said, it's like the basic boot camp about, right. So we really got to get clear about first, who's the ideal client. And then, a simple message so that when people hear the message, it resonates with them. Yeah. And then when you, uh, then you need to be able to present once they get their attention and interest, how can I trust you? You need to present your ideas because now you're going to have a chance. Uh, we haven't even gotten to the tactics of getting in front of them yet, but yeah. that's a part of it too. And then um, you need to present your ideas in a way that when they hear you talk, they can instantly think to themselves, huh, no one has ever talked to me like this before. No one has ever presented it. This is different because people are looking for different. If you sound like everybody else, they think, oh, I tried all those other, you sound like everyone else. They right. couldn't help me. You probably can't either. Right. Right. So that's a big component is taking what you know and, and, and presenting it in a simple way. And we help you do that really rather quickly. And then the last thing we're helping you do is create a simple, um, kind of like a daily operating system, but for marketing and sales so that you have these simple plan and you know, again, this is like boot camp. Now, once you got this and you're running it and you're putting in your 60, 90 minutes a day on the basics, yeah. you know, systematizing what used to happen from a referral here, or a, you know, a phone call right. there, an email there, then you start to have a simple, repeatable marketing and selling system and consistent flow of clients. And, and that's the goal. And that's what happens within four weeks. We also then provide ongoing support for the next 12 months, you know, that so you can ask us any questions oh, nice. as well because, because, um, 
the fact is that uh, people need, you know, you're going to go out there in the real world and I don't want you to be on your own. Uh, there are going to be questions. So we have yeah. uh, continued access to me and my uh, support coach, who, by the way, has been with me for seven years. It's not somebody who's just, you know, I'm so, you know, just hiring as a way of like, you know, offloading the work. Someone who sure. really knows their stuff. Okay. Uh, that was at least a minute, right? No, that's, that's good. And I appreciate you uh, uh, digging into that because the, the daily plan piece, that's a real gem. Like I, I think, again, going back to the conversation we've had this whole time, which is so many people are looking for this easy thing to set it and forget it kind of approach to marketing. And fundamentally, when you're starting out and even for a very long time afterwards, you are in a daily engagement of doing the kinds of things that would attract attention. So that's great. So we've got, you know, essentially understanding who it is you're talking to, really solid messaging and a daily operating system for, uh, yeah. for getting that going in um, and then ongoing support, which again, uh, I agree with you. Every, what is it? Mike Tyson said, everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the face. <laughs> so, you yeah. know, you have the great theory out of four weeks and then, then finally, uh, when you start dealing with it on a daily basis, questions. Yeah. About that, so. yeah and unfortunately we get a lot of people who have spent uh, years of their life and like, untold thousands of dollars, uh, you know, going after the other, sure. the other tactical things only yeah. to kind of come and kind of stumble in the doorway like bloodied. Uh, but we clean them up and we help them get really focused and say, look, now that you've, now that you're no longer, uh, you know, uh, caught by the illusion, let's, <laughs> let's get, let's turn this into a real business. And that's, uh, yeah. that's what it is. Solid. So four weeks, uh, the name again of the program is you a force to be reckoned with. Don't go that net. You a force to be force. reckoned with. Great. Yeah. That sounds great. And uh, yeah, click on the link here, um, dovegordon.net slash Frank Bria in order to get the, uh, the manual, um, which really is, I mean, the, it is good. $97 easily could have, could, uh, that's a perfectly. Hey, I'll just, I'll be open. The reason we started giving it away was because I was getting people going through that and saying like, wow, this is really good. Uh, and some people then come and say, hey, could you help, can I, can I work with you to build this? Because it's, yeah. it's really solid, simple, clear. Um, and at some point I realized, you know, if we give this away, we'll reach more people and uh, many more people will get free help from it. But uh, there will yeah. also be more people who want to work with us. So that's, you know, that's just, that's my secret uh, motive. That's, that's amazing. All right. Well, um, Dove, thanks so much for spending time with us. Really appreciate it. Uh, really insightful. I love, uh, you know, you're kind of a contrarian in this area, which I, I love. I love talking about that stuff. Um, and uh, appreciate your time. Thanks so much for the gift thanks to the for audience. Um, and uh, for everyone who's been listening, thanks so much for joining us on the Six to Seven Figure Show. And uh, we will uh, be with you next time. All right, see you soon. 